daycare and then to create a, an immersion charter school so that we can have these genuine monomony experiences and uh, again begin to view the world like our ancestors. Learn how to speak the Monomany language fluently because again you know I don't want the language to die out. <laughs> He said. And what that was, he says, don't give up. And those are words that I'll carry with me until my walk is over. The origin of the Menominee people goes back thousands of years, and it took place at the mouth of the Menominee River. It was handed down to oral history by our ancestors and our elders. And it was here at the Menominee River that the great bear emerged from the Menominee River, and the Creator saw him and was the first Menominee. He transformed the bear into human form. As the bear didn't want to be alone, he called the eagle flying above. Brother eagle, come down, be my brother. The eagle descended and started walking with the bear up the river. And the Creator, too, transformed him into human form and was a second Menominee. I think the huge ancestral bear that we have in the background, it re represents the uh, Menominee creation story. It was the first being that was transformed into human form at the mouth of the Menominee River. The Menominee has occupied over 10 million acres of land. And I say occupy because we did not own the land. It was our philosophy that we only lived on the land and used only what we needed, what the Creator had left for us, forms of food and uh, shelter. The earthworks, the mounds, the burial sites, the garden beds were made by our ancestors of the Menominee people. And we believe that over the years there were changes in their, their lives and that burying our dead in these mounds were part of the life cycle that we had. We believe they're culturally spiritual to us.
I think it's important that we continue to tell the, the, the story, the beginning of our tribe, especially to our youth or of our tribe need to know about how we came about, where, where we come from. The Menominee people have lived in this area for over 10,000 years. We're indigenous to what is now Wisconsin. We've always been here. We don't have a migration story. Our creation story, our beginning, took place at the mouth of the Menominee River. Kinipoi Village is, is named after one of our chiefs, Chief uh, Kinipoi. And it was the um, Kinipoi's band after the reservation was established. He moved his band up to an area called West Branch. And it was here that Kinipoi uh, settled along with several of the families in his band. Lived a good life there. He was part of the Christian chiefs of our people. Um, soon after, there was a church that was built in the West Branch area. But the band up there, they practice a lot of agriculture. Also were hunters and gatherers, but for the most part settled in that area. After the um, establishment of the Menominee Reservation in the 1854 treaty, uh, that was signed at Kashina Falls, not far from here. It was the head chief of our tribe at the time. His name was Oshkosh. And Oshkosh, seeing the wealth of the, of the natural resources we had here, what the government didn't want was a place called wilderness, and that was this reservation. And uh, nobody wanted to live here but Oshkosh. He said, my people have lived in this area for centuries. We know this area, let me move my people there, in which the government let us move to this reservation, part of our ancestral territory. And it was here, the wilderness was the trees, what nobody else wanted. And Oshkosh had said, well, we can make use of these trees. The trees are culturally and spiritually significant to us. Um, we've been around them for centuries. What we can do is, we see people using them for building their log homes and whatever else. We can do that and we can do this in a manner that will not harm the population of the trees. I believe our ancestors played a big part of creating these earthworks, the mounds and burial sites, garden beds, storage pits. And we see that evidence here on the Menominee Reservation. It wasn't until 1634 and prior to that, one of our Menominee elders had a dream that over the Bay of Green Bay, a large boat would come over the bay. Within that boat would be light-skinned people that would change our lives forever. Right after the migration of Europeans here, they brought a lot of things with them as far as trade items, but they also brought disease to us. Some of that being smallpox was a big one. We did lose a lot of our people through smallpox, through cholera. Mississippi, she's calling my name. Catfish, you are jumping that paddle wheel bumping. Black water, keep rolling on fast, just the same. Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water. On Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Yeah, keep on shining your light. Gonna make everything great. Mama gonna make everything alright. And I ain't got no worries, cause I'm 
Dixieland, pretty mama, come and take me by the hand. By the hand, take me by the hand, pretty mama, come and dance with your daddy all night long. I'd like to hear some funk at Dixieland, pretty mama, come and take me by the hand. By the hand, take me by the hand, pretty mama, come and dance with your daddy all night long. I'd like to hear some funk at Dixieland, pretty mama, come and take me by the hand. Come on, by the hand. National Historic Preservation Act is very important to the Menominee people. Um, I work a lot with uh, the NHPA because I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. And what that does for the Menominee people, it gives us a chance to preserve our cultural resources because if there is a federal undertaking here on the reservation, um, if a project uses federal funds, if the, uh, if the project occurs on uh, trust land or uses a uh, federal permit, then the federal agency has to assess historic properties in consultation with the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. When I first started, I really didn't know much about archaeology. I really didn't trust archaeologists because I just thought they came in and dug up the ground and took the resource. And that was the farthest from the truth. After starting to work with the archaeologist and Dr. Overstreet, there was an understanding of cultural sensitivity from not only from Dr. Overstreet, but other archaeologists that worked here. They helped soften the the idea that archaeologists aren't here to just dig, they're here to help preserve the past. I worked hand in hand with Dave Overstreet on projects. Oh, it's been very good. Like I say, he's been with us for 
longer than I've been here as historic preservation and tip over the tribe. And he has gained the trust of not only our department, the Tipo office, but as the tribe as a whole.
have a youth culture camp. We have two camps every year. And within those camps, we teach language, culture, and traditions. The reason why we do that is to help young Menominees identify who they are as Menominee people. I think it's, you know, for the Menominee people, we, as a sovereign government, sovereign nation, with the teaching of our culture, language, and traditions, we will be a sovereign nation in the future because of our language and our culture and learning who we are and to identify us as Oman and Manewak, people of the wild rice. I think it's important for the Menominees to uh, preserve what we have left. Uh, we have lost a lot. Our, our tribal history goes back thousands of years. And we have to tell that story of why we're still here. We've survived a lot of things. We survived the treaty era. We survived the boarding school experience. We have to tell that story, which we're, we do. And we do that through um, oral history projects, through asking our elders what what happened in the past. And we try to teach this in our schools. We have the needed funds to really uh, do a good job of preserving of what we have. I think the tribe has to put in more funding to help preserve our rich cultural heritage and language.
honor. We are very humbled to announce the veterans of the Menominee Nation and also this afternoon with us, the Mohican Veterans Association. Let's put our hands together and welcome each of these veterans groups into our dancer arena. Thank you. 
Johnson!